So the IQP is the interactive qualifying project. This third year IQP requirement is more meant to have students engage with partners in the world and that allows students to go um, off campus and do projects at any of our a number of um, project centers around the world. I think getting to know people in such a short amount of time and on such a deep level is something that is really unique to the IQP experience. So when I was applying for IQP sites, uh, I actually had New Zealand um, as my number one. I've heard a lot of really cool things about New Zealand. New Zealand was my first choice for IQP. My first thoughts uh, when I found out I was going to be going to New Zealand was just that I was excited to get to meet these people. Um, I recognized a bunch of the names, but I didn't know anybody in depth. So before the students go on their seven week project term off campus, they all complete a um, preparation course. Uh, an important part of the preparation class is to allow that cohort, the teams themselves, but also the larger cohort, to develop a kind of um, relationships and to develop a, a, a little community, I would say, among that cohort. I didn't know a lot of people going to ID2050, um, so, and at first it kind of felt like just a normal class, but then it quickly, it quickly dawned on me that you know, we were going to be spending the next, pretty much the full semester with these people. Just like flying into New Zealand, the, the, air, the airport's basically surrounded by like crazy jagged mountains and it was just such an experience to see it out the window, I'd never seen anything like that. When we first got there, I remember feeling like some, just like, you know, hesitation to be like, hey, let's go get lunch or something. And, uh, um, I think that's totally normal, you know, like our housing situation in New Zealand kind of lent itself to a little bit more like group cohesiveness. You know, we were all housed in this apartment complex and eventually, you know, you start to know where people, people's rooms are. So it was very easy to just walk out of your room, go down, knock on somebody's door and be like, hey, like, what are you up to? Or, so I think just seeing that, I was like, was like Okay, like we got we got a good group of people, like it'll be good. Uh, I flew to Queenstown first um, because I knew I probably wasn't gonna have another chance to get that far south into the South Island. So I'm not a big heights person at all, like at all. But we were with like a group of five people, and we just like impromptu decided to go bungee jumping. And it's a 430 foot drop. They put you on this little dolly and then they kind of rope you out to the middle of this canyon. That's where you do the jump. So I got to the edge of the canyon. I was like, oh yeah, so that's, <laughs> so that's really far. <laughs> and they like, they put you in this chair and they shackle you all up and then they take a picture with you. But I don't think it really hits you until you like, like close up to the edge where you're supposed to jump and you like, you see that just nothing below you. And then, like, I tried to push off, but my knees were just not, not doing it. So I just, I kind of fell off. <laughs> um, but it was pretty cool. There's one guy who did it naked because it was his birthday, and yeah, so that was that was interesting. First wow experience was definitely um, hiking Mount Tongariro, which was the 11 mile hike. So the Tongariro hike was a hike that we did the second day that we were up in the Taupo region, and. Again, we wanted to challenge ourselves. My favorite weekend trip that we did was we went down to Christchurch to hike uh, the, the Mueller Hut Trek. That was so awesome. But it was definitely the most physically challenging hike that I've ever done in my life. And so we had people of different backgrounds in our group. The Tongariro hike itself is 
pretty challenging. There's a lot of technical aspects of it that require you to just like keep on moving. And I remember halfway up being like, wow, I really just am not cut out for this. I shouldn't be here. Like maybe I should just go back. And like, I felt like I was holding up the team. That was probably the coolest experience just because one, I've never experienced being in New Zealand landscape like that before. I'd never been actually climbing a mountain. Like I don't do a lot of hiking. So that was a whole new challenge in of itself. But um, everybody was so like reassuring of each other, like we're all gonna get there, it's gonna be awesome, like let's just, like, just keep pushing. It was towards the end of the hike, there was like four miles left, and we were starting to get gassed. I mean, I'm not like the most in shape person ever, so I was pretty tired. And I remember we were like, can we just like stop? Can we just like chill? But then I remember Edge, he was like, no, like we're almost there, like let's keep going. And he pulled out his snacks, like water, and we were like, all right, like let's refuel, like let's keep going, kind of like kept each other motivated to finish the hike. So we had a few people in our group that we're struggling and, and that's okay. Like the whole entire aspect that we had going for us was that we wanted everybody to get to the end of the trail. Having a collective group decision with these strangers that I had just met was really cool to just be like, wow, we can actually achieve something together. Um, even though it was something as simple as a hike, like it's that mindset that really carries through with, with the whole entire experience that we had in New Zealand. I remember um, we were staying at a hut on the mountain, which was amazing, and I saw the most stars that I've ever seen in my whole life, and I was so physically exhausted, and we all fell asleep so early, but I woke up to see the stars, and then I woke up again the next morning to catch the sunrise as it was coming over the range that was across the way, and that was probably like the most beautiful thing that I've seen in my entire life. I think that's New Zealand for me. <laughs>
and taking it all in. And it was probably one of the most beautiful moments that I've ever had um, in my life. It was just me participating in the environment and then having all the people that I had all these memories with in the background, just like giggling and laughing and sharing stories. And I could just like faintly hear them around the, the corner of this, of this hill. Um, but I was just there in the moment. I can't like point at a, like a specific weekend and say like, or a day and be like, this is the day that I grew like as a person. But I think it's really the entire trip and it's a process and it happens over the entire seven weeks. I learned so much about individuals and how much they care about other people's lives, about the projects that they work on, um, about all of the experiences that they had. It was really incredible to find that during the IQP experience. A lot of uh, schools have study abroad programs, but it wasn't until I actually did it that um, I realized how important it was to like my education. When I go into the, the corporate world and start working at a job, I doubt that I'll be able to meet my coworkers in the same way that I was able to spend seven blissful weeks with my IQP partners.